And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us from the wonderful world of Shades of Vengeance, a man who has made many <laughs> settings in the Era system, some of which have been visited in this temple, and now with his triumphant return through Era Dragon Song, the one and only Ed Jowett. How you doing today, man? I am doing great, and it's great to be back in the temple, of course. Uh, I always say every time I come here that I, I love being here. Well, I keep coming back, that proves it, and you can't hate me too much because you keep letting me come back, mm. so um, I'm going to assume that all is good. Yeah. So, if I recall correctly, I, th I think Dragon Song was hinted at in one of in one of the issues of the Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Dragon Song was indeed not just hinted at. I actually delivered a a what you might call a a, a prototype of it. Mm -hmm. uh, no artwork, just a write up of most of the elements of the game. Um, more or less, that was what made me go. You know what? The actually delivering era Dragon Song a rubric primer for it is not going to be that much different. You know, I I can do it. Obviously, there's then a quality leap between, you know, a, a, a one-color zine with no images and, and a very low bar for overall quality because of the nature of that um, versus, you know, a full-color zine, uh, full-color rulebook primer, I'm sorry, which is going to make you hopefully, you know, look at it and go, wow, you know, that's that's always what I try and do. And Era Dragon Song is an incredibly old game as, as uh, era games go. Um, it's actually 10 years old. Um, it, the first time I ran it uh, was before I published Era the Consortium. Mm -hmm. So it's an extremely old game as Era games go. It's literally game number two. Um, it's the 12th one that I'm publishing, the 12th world that I'm publishing, I should say. Um, it's, sort of, it's, it's wasted a very long time with ongoing work on it. But ultimately, it, it's very similar to what I originally did 10 years ago. There, there are some improvements. Uh, it was a bit rough and ready 10 years ago, particularly around the races. Mm. And uh, I've, I've gone away and I've improved that significantly now. Um, but it's, it's sort of... It's one of those projects that's constantly slipped away from me. I've always meant to do it. And I've brought various people on board to help me with it. And it's not worked out for a variety of reasons. And... Yeah, it's it, it's sort of, I guess it was time. Um, mm -hmm. I did the Arizona issue, and, and then I went, right, okay, I can do this. Let's let's do it. Let's actually bring this to life. Um, get some images together, you know, get get the primer together and, 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 and bring the primer to life and see if people are actually interested in a high fantasy era D10. Mm -hmm. And... Even even though you're even though you are going high fantasy, this isn't going much like a lot of the projects you've done. This isn't um a, the t the typical approach. So, what would you what would you say were some of the media that served as inspiration for Dragon Song? Essentially, the Appendix N. Um, so there is absolutely uh you know some World of Warcraft influence in there. Um, there's a little bit of Harry Potter influence in its way, just in the way that magic is used for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it just occurred to me, you know, as, as someone who played World of Warcraft for more years than I care to admit, um, it, it occurred to me that, you know, that there's this, this general feel of magic is everywhere, but not everyone can use it. You know, like like the 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 maid in in um uh in the Stormwind bar, the mm. pub, can use magic to make the brush sweep, but but like I'm a warrior and I can't use it. And okay, fine. I I get other things as a warrior. I I was a protection warrior for the record. I was a tank mm. uh, all through the period of time when protection warriors were good, and then all through the time they were bad again, and then good again, and then. 
I played it a while. Um, mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, well, what is it that means that everyone couldn't use magic? Well, there's mana, right? So warriors, rogues don't have mana in World of Warcraft. And in most games, you know, a, a, a wizard or a, a a mage of any sort is is a sort of it's it's a rare thing that that takes a lot of training. Or or you're a sorcerer in D and D where it doesn't take a lot of training, but you know you have a lot of um, I guess linked to some unknown source of magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, they call it the weave in D and I lose track. It, it, I'm sorry, it changes too often. There's never um, been a set, there's never been a set bit of origin, and that's one of those things that's I've that I've um, been very very critical over. So uh, in Era Dragon Song, everyone just has magic. Every, everyone has access to magic if they want it. If they don't want it, it's just a skill like any other. So you can have zero in the skill, just as you can have zero in survival if you want to. That's completely up to you when you build your character. But if you want to have magic you have access to the same magic that everyone else does. Um, There is a small choice to make, and that's just because, similar to what I just sort of discussed about about sorcerers and how they draw it from somewhere that is not a god, not a deity, because that's a cleric, that that there there is magic in the world, and you can invoke a deity to have it in Era Dragon Song, or you can draw it from wherever magic is coming from. It's you know, sort of across the entire world, and it 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 it, it permeates everything. It it envelops the entire being of everyone. Mm-hmm. And then and then the second thing is is more. Uh, I don't want to do this. Um, one of the things that's always bothered me about Dungeons and Dragons is dungeons are scarily. Uh, sorry, dungeons. Uh, dragons are scarily scarily easy to kill. Like relative to what they could be. They're very easy to kill. And that really bothered me forever in Dungeons and Dragons, really. So I thought to myself, right, okay, well, dragons are just immortal, mm-hmm. right? You, you can't kill them, they're immortal. You're not going to be killing a dragon, okay? That's not what Dragon Song is about. You, you, you can go adventuring, you can go delving into old ruins or, or whatever you like, but you are not going to be able to kill a dragon because they are immortal. That's what immortal means. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is that the thing that makes the dragons immortal in this universe, which is another kind of separate thing, which is relatively unique, I think, is um, the dragon song. Or at least that's what everyone says. So they say that the dragons know and understand the dragon song. It's it's a uh, some kind of chant or song which describes the rise and fall of civilizations within the world. Mm-hmm. And it's said that if you could understand the dragon song, you would become immortal. And 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 so therefore that is the thing that makes dragons immortal is this understanding this thing. Um, it also it's also said to make them immune to certain kinds of magic. Specifically, um, there are giant floating cities, um, and I guess my my source for that is really the floating island from Sonic the Hedgehog. But you yeah, know, Angel you've, seen, you've seen it in a few other places. Um, uh, yes, Angel Island they call it, don't they? In mm-hmm. in some of the games, um, I I grew up on on the UK Sonic the comic, and they did not call it Angel Island in that comic. They called it the Floating Island. Yeah, I know. For I... reason, but they, but they call it Angel Island in in Sonic Three, didn't they? Um, um three, three advent adventure, and that's pretty much the name that's been that Frontiers it's, it's... as well, actually, mm-hmm. because I just played Frontiers, and and they did refer to it as Angel Island, and I did a quick double take, and I had to work out what it was, mm-hmm. um, because in my mind it's the Floating Island, because that's what that's 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 what I grew up with. Yeah, it's anyway, un- it's understandable. It's hard to catch with your opposite hand. Right, exactly. I, I just had to think for a minute when it, when Angel Island was brought up in Frontiers, which was a very good play, and I enjoyed it, just as an aside. I, I enjoyed it very much. It was uh, a different take on Sonic, mm-hmm. but but I enjoyed it. And now I'm getting a bit older, and my reactions aren't quite so quick. I preferred it, because I can't... I, I really struggled with Sonic Mania. It, it took a lot of doing. Anyway, coming back to Era Dragon Song. 
Um, uh, there are also floating islands similar to that in, in World of Warcraft, in fact. Uh, Tempest Keep and the Eye um, are good examples of uh, of of those sorts of uh, uh, floating islands that that I sort of imagined, but mine are tethered to the ground with giant chains, mm -hmm. almost as if they're going to float off. Um, they're full of magic. No one really knows what what they're all about. But it said the dragons can actually pass through the protective shield that surrounds them. So you know, if you were to be dumb enough to climb the chain all the way up, you'd you'd run into a magical shield that stops you. Yeah. Uh, but it said the dragons can pass through it. And enter the Archaeopolises. Mm -hmm. So, don't really know. Don't really know what's going on there. The players don't, and the the you know the the, the normal denizens of the world don't. Mm -hmm. But it's another fun thing, you know. And then sometimes the Archaeopolises fall to the ground. Um, maybe they run out of magic, or or no one really knows what causes it. But they fall to the ground, and um, within there tend to be riches and and also weirdness. So. One of the wonderful things about Era Dragon Song is this can go as weird fantasy as you want to, because what's inside these Archaeopolises, it could be anything and no one knows. And it's different every time. It's not like, oh yeah, this is one of those kind. No, it seems to be different every time. No one knows who put them there. No one knows why they're there. Mm -hmm. Everyone just knows that, you know, that the sky they're up there in the skies. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of them. No one knows exactly how many. I imagine no one's gone around counting them all. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. And, um, yeah, it's it's sort of when they fall to the ground, that's what provides you your, your sort of your dungeon crawl, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, I've literally just finished writing a campaign, actually, for the... Uh, uh, for one of the rewards in the Kickstarter. Um where you will explore one of these uh, one of these fallen archaeopolises um, shortly after uh, a, an event which I don't want to spoil you for, mm -hmm. um, uh, because I wouldn't I wouldn't want anyone listening to be spoiled for what's going to happen. But uh, it's a it's a three session campaign. I had tremendous fun writing it, um, and it should be really good fun to to get you started on 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 a journey in Era Dragon Soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can certainly get that. Now. Admittedly, when you mentioned the floating when you mentioned the floating islands, the other thing that came to mind, oddly enough, is Septera Core. It's which I know nothing about, yeah. so uh, certainly was not a source knowingly. Yeah, it's it's just one of those it's just one of those funny coincidences that can ha that can happen. But oh, absolutely. Given um, that there's you're... really no such thing as an original mm -hmm. as an original idea, right? Oh, yeah. And you know, may may maybe someone was influenced by. By that, or or or, or uh, they were both influenced by the same root thing, you know, what, whatever that was. The yeah. idea came from somewhere mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah, the though when when you mention this when you mention this idea of ma of magic being um being uh, being something that per be, being something that permeates ev um anyone and everything. Um, I will I will admit that. A small part of me ended up thinking of the way Qi or chi, or chi is used in a lot of wuxia works, where yeah, the, where it is that, where there is that omnipresence. And I I know some people will bring up the force, but let's be honest, the force pretty much is Qi in all but name. <laughs> More or less, it's also magic. So you know, um, well, the funny the funny thing is. In that I, that that idea of key and magic being separate—that's more of that's more of a Western interpretation. Yeah. Um, you look at a lot of wuxia. What would be a traditional spellcaster is just a different form of kung fu. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you entirely on that. Yeah. It's it's um you know it's 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 not an uncommon. Uh, I mean, even Final Fantasy touch on it. We talked about Final Fantasy last time, mm -hmm. uh, but Final Fantasy Seven. You know, you've got the life stream, right? Yeah. Essentially, what I'm talking about is is that is what magic looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it's definitely one of my influences. If I was to ask, if I was asked to imagine what magic looks like yeah. in Era Dragon Song, I'd sort of point at that and go, right, sort of like this all across the world, but invisible. Mm -hmm. Um. And 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 you know that that's that sort of that's perfect for me 
for a starting point to then grow, you know, and start to grow mythology out of that, you know, um, um, the the eight races and the eight types of magic, you know, that's not a coincidence mm -hmm. that there are four light and four dark and four arcane and four divine yeah. types of magic. Um, it's 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 all it all stems from an origin myth which I which I came up with. I've I've always loved mythology. I've always been a sci-fi and mythology guy, mm -hmm. which most people go what what. But uh, it, it works for me. It's 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 storytelling without boundaries that exist in the real world, I guess. Um, and you know the 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 origin myth for Era Dragon Song is that this this first hero Gilgamesh, mm -hmm. um, you know he he chops off eight heads from the World Hydra, the the first monster, mm -hmm. and these eight heads fell into pools of water and four of them were in the shade of an archaeopolis that was in front of the sun at the time and four of them were not four of them were in the light and four of them were in the in the shadow mm -hmm. and from that sprung the four light races and the four dark races which the only you know no, no, none are evil and none are good it, it, in the idea of an evil race has always bothered me there's there's no reason why that has to be that way people are varied enough can't surely every race can be varied enough of course to be like, but don't yeah. call me Shirley uh I I won't uh in in deference to the source of that quote which is one of my favorite movies um uh and, and you know I, I just feel that it's a possibility or, or really um a necessity when building a world that, that all of the races feel like they have their own identity mm-hmm um, and, and, you know, that means there are some good and some bad, you know, the, the, there's a spectrum in every race, you know, there are some evil people and some good and, and all the, the only thing that's different between a dark race and a light race near a dragon song is the environment they prefer. Dark races are adapted for underground, you know, in, in, in the dark and light races are adapted for being in the sunlight. That's, that's it. That's the difference. And then each race has their own individual thing that they are particularly good at. So, Fae, they happen to be lucky. Um, uh, uh, Gigans, uh, uh, you you might call them giants or ogres or trolls. Mm -hmm. um, although I, I would say ogres and trolls are kind of derogatory terms used for Gigans in in this world. Sort of sort of um, like calling a banga a lizard, which don't which yeah. you should never do unless you want to get your ass kicked. Or, or calling a Zimian in era the consortium a bug. Yeah, mm -hmm. S same sort of thing. Yes. Um. And uh, 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 you know the the you know they're you know they're enormous. They're huge. Mm -hmm. Um, they're they're significantly larger than any human or 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 any other species. And humans as well. They have their own uh their own abilities relative to other species. And I went with Star Trek, to be honest. Um, humans build communities. Uh, I just thought Enterprise, you can say a lot of bad things about Star Trek Enterprise, but the reality is that it did really portray that humans are different to anyone else in the galaxy thing. Mm -hmm. um, which you don't see so much in when obviously the Federation is, is an established thing. You don't see that so much because obviously everyone's kind of a bit more aligned now and we're, we're doing the transhumanism thing. You know, that's great. But, you know, in, in Era Dragon Song, you know, humans are those those community builders. It's You know, it's not like orcs won't have a community of their own, for example. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be a little more wary of other other races. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll stick to their own mostly. Mostly. Again, it varies person to person, but... Humans in particular, you know, they, they, they like to build bridges between communities. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, each race has its own thing. Each magic has its own thing mm -hmm. that makes it unique and interesting. And, you know, you then, the only choice you have to make with magic, once you put a skill in there, is am I going to invoke a deity for it? Or do I pull this from whatever, you know, life stream esque magical thing mm -hmm. exists? that is the source of magic. Yeah. And when it comes... Now, of course, when it comes to each of the... Um, 
when it comes to each of the ra each of the races and just throughout it, one th the thing that I did notice is the dualism that's pr that's present throughout, which is very much a motif going back to the original um, Final Fantasy. Uh, and I'd s I know we I know Wheel of Time also had a dualism motif, but that's a that's a can of worms I don't feel like opening <laughs> at this time. But given that given that given that i'd like to i'd like to delve a bit into the into the types of magic and also with each, with each one kind of go into a character a character from fiction who you think would fit within that particular um t type of magic and i'll start with blood magic it's an interesting challenge i i, I like that that's 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 new i've i've not tried to do something like that per se before so, uh, blood magic. Blood magic uses your life force to power the spells. So, uh, basically, how much life you sacrifice from your own health multiplies the amount of damage you have. So, if you were to sacrifice zero health, you would do zero damage. Mm -hmm. um, blood magic. It, it, it extracts the very essence from... The, the 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 target you know it, it it pulls the 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 life force out of them in effect um who would i say uses blood magic um let me think uh i would say someone who would use blood magic pretty happily would be i i reckon ganondorf is the kind of like ganondorf from ocarina of time mm -hmm is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. You know, it's because he sucked that that life force out of Hyrule while you were imprisoned by the Master Sword, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's that kind of, like, he would happily use blood magic because he would just go... And, 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 you know, you might just explode. Yeah. I, um, I, suppose, I suppose this might be a little bit obvious, but something that does come to mind is um, Kane. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you know, like, like you know, you could. We had a vampire uh, uh, play in the original game that one ten years ago that I spoke about. She learned some blood magic, but she didn't learn as much blood magic as the as the human who was a blood mage. And he just went, "I am all in on the blood magic. I know all of the blood magic and and use blood magic. And I don't care that I'm weedy. I don't care if all my health goes. I'm using blood magic everywhere." Um, and, and, you know, so the, uh, the automatic thing might be, yeah, might be a vampire might use blood magic, and they might, but they also might and not go that extreme, because they have to sacrifice, the, the thing, the one thing that would make me think maybe not Kane would be, and I, I'm talking Kane in, you know, in, in various mythoses where he is actually a vampire, such as World of Darkness or, or, yeah, I'm, um, I'm specifically or, referring to, or, I'm specifically referring to Legacy of Cain. Legacy of Cain, right. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so that, that's a good example. Um, see, I think he's too proud to use his health to damage others. Yeah, given given that, I'd say this might be this might be a bit this might be a bit of a stretch, but I would say very early spawn. Yes. No, I can see that. He would. I think he would hesitate to a very early, very early spawn. I think he would hesitate to be that um, destructive to most of... Because there's a bit of collateral with blood magic. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> And he'd, he'd hesitate on the collateral, I think. He... Al Simmons was an, was an assassin, but the way he ends up, he ends up fighting quite a bit does not... Does not have a whole lot of constraint. That's true. In par in That's part because true. of the of the kind of things that he's usually fighting against, like lo like yeah. his long time, yeah, pain which in is the ass which violator. is really always something, someone very nasty or something very nasty. Which is what I was thinking, but like it, there would be occasions where you would be concerned about collateral damage mm -hmm. with blood magic. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I would I would definitely think so. Yes. Mm hmm. Um. So the ne the next one is elemental magic. 
So elemental magic, um, I'm just trying to think of a, a really good example. I mean, elemental magic is is the spirit of Ragnaros from World of Warcraft. It mm-hmm. is, I am fire. Yeah. You know, like, it's... it's and, and everyone has their preferred element, whatever that might be. Um, and it's... It, 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 yeah, it, it's that. It's that. I am so close to this element. I might as well be made of it. Yeah. And obviously, I've I've picked on Ragnaros there. Uh, mm-hmm. There's Gondoran, obviously. From again, sorry for anyone who hasn't played World of Warcraft. I I played for many years and and earned myself a Thunder Fury. So I went around fighting a lot of elementals. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. So yeah, no. Um. Uh, definitely, that kind of character is what we're talking about for elemental. It's the. It's the. This is the. This is. I. I am fire, and elemental magic is really about shaping that in a way that delivers it to your enemy more than it is about being. You know, uh, creating fire. You, you're already the fire, or you're already the the lightning, or the ice, or whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd say. This, this might be a little bit obvious, but the thing that comes to mind is just any type of bender in Avatar. Yeah. That, that, that is one of the obvious ones, of course. Um, although, I don't know, I mean, I suppose it's arguable, some of those, it does feel a little bit like they're creating the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, particularly fire. You know, f- fire is the easy one to pick on here. Yeah. Because there isn't fire around, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yes, that's my thought. Yeah. Oh, the next one is, of course, enchantment magic. Uh, no, it's actually enhancement, enhancement. magic. That's, that's an old Which, habit of mine. Annoyingly, my voice actor also read wrongly initially. <laughs> and I have to go back and do it again. Um, yes, it's enhancement magic. Mm-hmm. Um, who would use enhancement magic? Let me think. Um, it's your... It's it's your 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 sort of your your fundamentally support character. It's your um, I, I suppose in in uh, in in Final Fantasy VII terms, it's it's Eris, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, she might use holy or light magic, maybe, but but you know, like like it's your it's your fundamentally support magic person mm. who is going to be helping people. As their priority, it's going to be the person who throws a shield at people because they're in trouble or or running into trouble <laughs> more uh, often than not. Yeah, I will, I will, po- I will posit one other uh, possibility, and that is a concept built around the adept from Sh- from Shadowrun. Adepts, right. yep. which yep, I do. For those for those who aren't aware, adepts are essentially mages who fo- who f- focus their magic internally to enhance what their body can do. And given how en- and given how enhancement magic is is all about en- is all about enhancing um nat- natural ab- natural abilities to a point. Yep. Um. That would that would certainly fit. I wanted to bring that up just to just to illustrate that. Um, somebody who's using enhancement magic, based on what I'm seeing here, doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be a se- a second line combatant. Absolutely not. You could well <coughs> you could well be an enhancement mage who spends your combat turns enhancing your sword and then runs in and, and absolutely just just wallops them because you're more or less a barbarian with magic. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. That is that is absolutely an application for enhancement magic. Yeah. Now, the next one on the list is necromancy. Which who would use necromancy magic? Well, uh, gee, can I go with World of Warcraft again? <laughs> it feels a bit feels a bit basic to go. Well, the Lich King, obviously. Um, uh, but but I mean, it is that you know you 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 even get a, a, a spell inspired by uh, Army of the Dead in um, in World of Warcraft, which just starts spawning undead everywhere, and and and. You know the the Lich King fight in World of Warcraft was definitely a an influence for the uh, Well of Despair spell, mm-hmm. which just sucks life out of anyone who's near it. You know, it's the, the those ashtrays on that fight. So many times, so many deaths just from people standing in them. Um, yeah. 
Um. And uh, yeah, no, it it was very very influenced by by the Lich King. Uh, was the the necromancy spell tree or spell list, I suppose, that I put together. Yeah, and I I there's there's one other one one other non um non typical um character I can think of that would easily f- that would easily fit the necromancer um kit um kit. This might this might be a bit of a stretch, but Shadow Man. In ter- in terms of the old in terms of the old Valiant comic, it got turned into a into a game on the N64. Oh. Uh, I, I I didn't play the game, but I'm I'm aware of the I'm aware of the character. Yeah, um, yeah, I I think he probably would use it. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, that the um, there are also uh, you know what uh, what keeps sticking in my mind about necromancy magic. There is a character or a group of characters in Neverwinter Nights two, and they are just the most throwaway thing of all time. Like you fight them at the beginning because they're easy enemies, but they're basically just like a necromancer cult. And those guys keep popping into my head whenever I think about the necromancy mage mm-hmm. tree. Um, you know, I, I feel like they would go all the way, like all the way. Yeah, I, I brought up um, Shadow Man because I wanted to, I wanted to show that you can that you don't have to go with the typical that the typical Definitely. villainistic approach with necromancy. You don't actually, um, and and there is absolutely the the. Um, uh, Zoe the Animator from uh, Era the Empowered would use necromancy magic. That's mm-hmm. like you don't have to be a bad guy to use necromancy. It's it's you could see it as using the resources around you. Um, well, a lot, of, you don't, a lot of people yeah, it's, forget. It's not it's not got that immediate, and especially in Era Dragon Song, it's not got that immediate negative connotation. Something a lot of people forget is. In ancient times, necromancy was a form of divination. Mm, absolutely. The the central idea is you are you are well, trying to divine. Osiris was basically brought back through necromancy. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of that early form was di- was divining the environment by spe- by speaking with the dead. That's why. Yeah. Um, if I had to use a perfect example of that, it's it would be the mausoleum scene in the first Hellboy movie. With him bringing right. that guy back, and he's yeah. a he's yeah. a complete crumudgeous asshole. Uh, I, I I love I love that character. I think he's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, uh, that's another good example of where it doesn't have to be a bad thing to bring someone back from the dead and 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 work with them. Yeah. You know, there's 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 this this fundamental belief that necromancy is evil, which is because it is in the D and D universe and. It's shaped a lot of our well, and and obviously Lord of the Rings as well. Um, you know, it's sort of like it's dark magic. It's 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 bad. It's bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't go there. You know, um, and it. I, I sort of feel a little like the Emperor in uh, in in uh, in the th- uh, episode three. It's it's you know, the dark side is a is a path for many abilities that some deem unnatural. Mm-hmm. Well. You know, in this world, necromancy isn't unnatural. You know, it's it's a it's a skill that anyone can learn, and and there are reasons why you might have it. I I imagine there's um, I imagine there there are manors out manor houses out there where all of the staff are maintained as 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 necromancy raised zombies mm-hmm. because they'll follow orders and and serve, and you know you don't you know your 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 head of your household might be a really really powerful necromancer who. Who raises zombies and has them wander around doing his bidding? That's I've all I've I've made it clear that my favorite um, interpretations of the of the Grim Reaper are from things like say Maximo, where the reason he brings Maximo back to life is because if there's no more dead, he's out of a job, or right. um, or the or the Reaper in um, Conquer's Bad Fur Day who really 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 hates cats because nine lives means nine times the work. And of course, the creme de la creme is death in um, Discworld, right? Yes, where, of course. Where the kind of person who would hand who would hand a sword to a kid because it's educational, and if she cuts herself, that'll be a very important lesson. <laughs> yeah, but the it's the next one, of course, would be would be holy magic, 
Oh. So we're over at the divine area yep. now. Mm -hmm. And the holy magic is your is your pure of heart healer. Yeah. Well, I say that, but it doesn't have to be. You could be you could be uh you know, let let's go with someone who would have holy magic. Why would why would um you know who would have holy magic? Apocalypse from the X-Men would have holy magic. Well, he does have a god complex. He does have a god complex, he'd probably call on himself. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying. But he would have holy magic. Yeah. And the reason he would have holy magic is to heal himself. Yeah. Right? Because he, he wants to be immortal. He wants to die from no injuries. He would want the ability to heal himself. Mm -hmm. and um, I sorry. I'm, it probably won't surprise you, but whenever I played pre whenever I played um priest like characters, I, I will always go unorthodox. Like I've used the I used the preacher from De from Dead Alive once, you know, the whole I right. kick ass for the Lord. Um I if I want, if I have to go more zealous, I'll invoke Alexander Anderson, even though he doesn't use holy magic, but he, but there is that approach, um, you know, some somebody who will he, somebody who will heal the shit out of you if if need be, um, absolutely, absolutely. So you know there are loads of applications for holy magic, and divine just means you call on a deity mm -hmm. and believe in a deity. It doesn't mean it's a friendly deity. Yeah. You know, if, if, in theory, if you wanted to call on, you know, a, uh, you know, an, an old god of the Cthulhu esque variety that do exist in this world, mm -hmm. you could do that. Well, let's, let's also that consider how um, consider how people treat Krom in the in the Conan books. No right. one prays to him. In fact, his name is used like a curse word. Because uh, the, last, indeed, indeed. <laughs> the last thing you want is to get his attention or the attention of his devils. Uh, indeed. Um, but but also, he, uh, if I remember right, he did teach humanity. Well, they left it, but he, he, he was happy enough to let humanity continue to make steel. Yeah. And, of, of course, of course, the whole thing with the with the riddle of steel that was in the first film. Um, and it's it's more it's more due to the fact that Crom it Crom is draw, is drawing upon I'd say obviously the obvious one is Odin but to a lesser extent um Serunos you know this this idea of this respect this respected and this respected and feared almost Machiavellian deity that I think of Crom as a bit more like Prometheus actually. From Greek myth, he's he's not inter he's not eternally getting eaten. So. No, no, but nor is nor is Prometheus once Heracles gets hold of him. So it's not a big problem. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's it's more the the you know what you know what humanity can have this. I'll let them have this. You know, it's it's like yeah, you know what? Um, let's let's do that. Let's let's let humanity have this one. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what that's what Krom always feels like to me. But yeah, you could call on any deity for divine magic. Mm -hmm. Now with um, light magic, I'd say this is where you get your your more off your more offensive affairs with it. Definitely, and you know someone who I think would use light magic. Um, I'm 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 sort of in the in the Ada Wong place. I'm in the in the. Um, uh, uh, oh goodness, her name the 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 shiker who survived the the in in Ocarina of Time um it begins with I and I've forgotten her name, which is terrible. Mm. Um, you know the one I mean, yeah, uh, the one who was the, the 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 older lady who was uh the the au pair mm -hmm. for for Zelda, for lack of a better better phrase. Um, yeah, she would use light magic mm. because. What light magic does, sure, it, it, it you know it, it causes light, but what it does is it leaves that persistence of vision afterwards. It leaves that shadow over your vision. You're 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 blinded. You know that there's there's distraction and misdirection and a lack of ability to see what's really happening. Mm -hmm. Once you once you've used it and done your significant damage, um, and that's that's what I think. Um, that's that's who I think would use light magic. Yeah. Now, and of 
I will I will admit I'd probably end up making a Blues Brothers reference after casting it by saying, Do you see the light? <laughs> because, because I'm always on the on the pursuit of finding the worst jokes I can. Forget whether it's come out yet for this video, but um have have we done the light the light magic? Yes. Yes, we have. We did that a couple of updates ago. So in the light magic video, um, it mentions, you know, I had the character mention that that she's tested this to make sure that it works by shining the, the searing light in her own face. Um, blinding herself. Mm. And uh, the reason the reason that story exists is someone actually did that in gameplay. He was an orc with one intelligence and he started wondering what searing light looked like. Which... <laughs> That's... So he blinded himself. <laughs> oh, that's one way to have your orc to be um, go through go through the Zatoichi challenge. Indeed. So that that was a thing, and and I thought it was so much fun that I I decided to put it in that uh, in 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 that in that uh, snippet about light magic. I thought it was I thought it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So now next is uh, mind magic, which. It's interesting that you classify that as div as divine. Would that be built around your de your knowledge based deities then? Uh, well, again, you can call on any deity for this, mm -hmm. right? So the thing is that that you know, if you look at like the 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 shapeshift, for example, you might turn into something terrifying. You know, it, it might be absolutely horrifying, but what people are seeing is what they want to see, wh whether they know it or not. You know, whether it's conscious or subconscious, they're seeing what they want to see. Mm -hmm. And that's what mind magic is, is about. It's about people seeing what they want to see, which I feel is very linked to the divine nature in a, a fantasy world like this, because I would think gods can take on almost any form they like, right? So, you know, it, it, when you if you were to see a god in this, you know, a deity in this in this world, it might look like anything, but it would probably look like what you expect it to see. Or or a reflection like how um yeah. Like the the thing that comes to mind is truth in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Right. Or how um in the Prince of Egypt, both Moses and well, God are both voiced by Val Kilmer, which was a which was a conscious choice. <laughs> oh, okay. And I, I do think Prince of Egypt is is underrated from that from that particular era, but that but that's a whole other matter. But it can, it uh, kind of goes into that whole concept of the of them of of deities appearing in a, in a way that's somewhat familiar to whoever's viewing them. Right. And, um, you know, I, I mean, characters who would use mind magic are, it's your your Professor Xavier's, and it's your, you know, which he more, he more or less does, right? Yeah. Um, it's your, uh, who else can I think of who would obviously... The Shadow? Mind magic. The, the Shadow. The Shadow is a great example. Mm -hmm. Um... Absolutely. Um, you know, it's 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 the characters that would want you to believe mm -hmm. things that maybe you otherwise wouldn't believe. Um, the Purple Man. Yes, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I'd also just in, just any sort of um, mi just any mind-based um, psychic in mo in most forms of fiction. I could even I could even bring up say the mule from the foundation books yeah absolutely yeah very good example but there are others who would use mind magic as well who aren't that kind of character mm -hmm. um, who maybe don't have the ability um i'm just trying to think of a good example um don corneo don corneo would be all over mind magic mm -hmm. um he's a he's a good example yeah and the the last of the types of magic you have is nature magic, which obviously the druids. <laughs> obviously, the, um, no one can solve their mystery. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so nature magic is, it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, obviously trying to choose, choose someone specific and, um, the thing about nature magic is it's, it's, it's what Aaron's son from Farscape would have. I could it's, see it. It's it's you know it's it's using the things around you or even more Zalak's son, uh, her mum, uh, would would have would have nature magic. It would be using the things around you and and maneuvering people into a place where where you can use them is is the kind of thing you know people who who know that they are superior. Uh, the predator mm -hmm. would have nature magic. Um, or uh, uh, maybe Craven the Hunter. I just finished playing Spider Man Two. He would have nature magic, I think. Yeah, I, um, I could see that. Oh. Possible. Just that anybody who is do is doing is doing that le leaning uh, leaning a bit into a bit into na a bit into nature. Um, I'd also say. If I if I wanted to give Rambo magic, he'd probably have nature magic. And... Yeah, it, uh, or 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 um, uh, I mean, even Arnie's character, whose name I've forgotten in Predator, would mm -hmm. also have nature magic. Yeah. You know, it's like that that would be a clash of nature magic, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, would would Predator be? Yeah. Um, I forget his. Name. I'm sure it's John, but I I couldn't tell you what his surname is in 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 Predator. Mm -hmm. And. Of course, of course, of course. E even with that, there's obviously plenty of plenty of druids throughout World of Warcraft that can that can go with it because that's one of the one of one of the OG um, archetypes. Even Absolutely, though... but, but in in then then in comes embody aspect because mm. uh, nature magic is actually seen as one of the types of magic that puts you closest to your deity. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you you literally get to become an aspect of your deity oh, yeah. for a period of time, uh, which is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. It uh, it strengthens your strongest stat to three times what it is, which is when it's out of eight, it's not insignificant, mm -hmm. and it also strengthens your weakest stat to that same number. Yeah. So for a moment, your 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 weakness is your, is one of your greatest strengths. Mm -hmm. uh, which is it's quite an interesting. It's it's quite an interesting uh, um, duality there, I guess. Yeah, and within the now within within the um within within the since you mentioned how you have your essentially your dungeon crawls from these pieces of of these floating islands. Yeah. Um, I am curious if you plan on having some some sort of some sort of chart to 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 kind of randomize the effects the effects within them, you know. To since you're this this idea of a dun, of a dungeon crawl in the typical map setup, from everything I've seen out of the era D10 system and from to, from talking with you and working with you as long as we have, that I don't I have a hard time seeing you doing the traditional grid combat kind of dungeon that's true um the the answer is there's there's not a random generation thing in this book mm -hmm. um space is limited i wanted to make sure that that you know that the stuff that's there you know the stuff that's there is the stuff that needs to be there mm -hmm. um it is absolutely not out of the question in a hypothetical core rule book for a dragon song in fact, I agree with you. It's pretty logical that you should have, you know, maybe a hundred options for what the next room might contain as you go into it. Um, it it seems pretty logical to me that that's what you would want to do. Yeah, <laughs> because um, and and that's much more in keeping with my design style. I, I agree with you because the thing the thing is with these with with the type of dungeon setup that you have here. You have there's the sky's literally the limit in terms of what you can have oh, within them, and I feel like that was by that was by design. Have a framing device where you could do virtually any kind of dungeon, even even pull a Doctor Who and, and say that the area is bigger on the inside if you wanted to. 
Uh, it's an absolute possibility. Um, I actually explored the idea um, in a previous session that I did um, of, yeah, actually, this Archaeopolis fell so long ago, there's now a mountain on top of it. So mm -hmm. it absolutely is like it's bigger on the inside. Yeah. Um, you know, you enter and then you don't know how far down you're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, no, there, there, you're right. There is no limit. I've I've toyed with the idea of a library, for example, just this giant library of, of unreadable books. And, uh, you know, the, the, there's the, you know, that it's not a dungeon you're in the stacks. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and I toyed with this idea and, um, a bunch of people in the, uh, in the, in the community came up with some ideas of things that we might put in such an Archaeopolis. It's not the one that I've written in the, in the campaign. It's, it's one that I'd like to do at some point. Um, I wanted to I wanted to do something else for this campaign but mm -hmm. um yeah I mean you know it's it's a really good example of okay Karazan is what I'm feeling like the library area of Karazan I think would be really fun to do and then you know you could have like a, a menagerie just a floating island that's like a zoo mm -hmm. like like and all the animals are in cages and they're all the the most exotic animals from times that have died out or whatever and, and and whether it's the dragons or some other force that's behind the Archaeopolises, they're keeping samples of them in the zoo, as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could um, I could certainly yeah, see that. Loads and loads of possibilities for what might exist. Mm -hmm. Um and 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 yeah, um again, Neverwinter Nights 2, there's that um the uh the warlock has that um uh like layer with all the mm -hmm. all the demon trapped. Yeah. And uh uh you know like you know something like that could be in an Archaeopolis. Um I think that would be a lot of fun to go around and, and, and actually interact with all these demons who are trapped there and trying to get you to free them. Mm -hmm. Um yeah I think that, that that'd be a lot of fun as well. Yeah it's and this is and I think this is the reason why I appreciate it being an Archaeopolis instead of a dungeon, because dungeon carries its own um, connotations in, in people's yeah. heads. And yeah. if, you, if you're going with this, this this idea of of it can be just about anything, that's definitely something to try and avoid. Yeah, I mean, you can also have dungeons in the more traditional sense, because the dark races build underground, right? Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely have an abandoned city. We don't know what happened here. Everyone died. Let's go down into the dungeon. Um, it's it's absolutely a thing you can do in the game, and 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 the game very happily provides a scaffold for it. It's just not the focus. Mm -hmm. And give, especially given the given the fact that the that the dark races build underground. I'm cu I'm curious if um if it's a case where they have they have issues de dealing with intense light and, ne and need cer and need certain protection, kind of like, say, Riddick? Not quite as extreme as Riddick, but that that sort of thing, yeah. They've got much better vision in the dark, mm -hmm. and, and, and I have no doubt that some will wear, you know, yeah, Riddick goggles or, or sunglasses or something to make the light just a bit less crushing. Yeah. But there's more to it as well because you know their skin even is not adapted to the light. Mm -hmm. So they so you know they'll get sunburned. They'll you know they 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 don't like it outside. I'm reminded of how a lot of a lot of Albed in FF10 would ha would have yeah. certain outfits yeah. to those sort of goggles. Yeah, the goggles because of the because an easy way to tell an Albed is the swirls in their eyes, but also. I could see that I could see some of the dark races on the surface having um, a degree of protective clothing to to account to account for that. You said not that extreme, so I'm not I'm not expecting the equivalent of a vampire in daylight having rags well, and, and wearing and, sunglasses. Yeah, you know, one of the stretch goals that I'm offering is in fact a vampire, right? Mm -hmm. And it would be severe reaction to light, mm -hmm. um, sort of more the more the Skyrim route of vampire, as in. Sure, it gives you some benefits. It gives you a lot of drawbacks. Yeah, a lot of drawbacks. Uh, would, and would, and you know you're you're making a choice. Would you have it that va that vampirism has them burst into flames if they get sunlight, or just they are severely weakened? Uh, I I would kill them if they got into sunlight. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, also, if they get hit by light magic. Which, yeah, which further go further goes into the Anderson um, motif I brought up earlier. Yeah, indeed. It's, uh, yeah, it, it can become very, very difficult to be a vampire around the wrong sorts of people. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's not something people should do lightly. I think that's just really important because I think, I think it, you know, like, like people sort of think, oh, being a vampire, it's really powerful. It's really strong. I'll be way faster and stronger. Yeah. I think you play down the limitations of it too much, you know? Mm hmm that's, that's what I think. Yeah, I can, I can certainly get You that. don't get to be blades, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, if if somebody wanted to do that, I already I already have a game that can co that can cover that called All of Their Strengths. Sure, or Era of the Empowered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The... But the idea was that sort of any race can become a, a vampire. Like vampirism is is just a disease, a permanent yeah. one. But... Yeah, which de which definitely makes definitely makes sense because it'd be it'd be a bit odd if it was so if it was human centric. Yeah. Because one of those things that people don't think too much about when introducing vampirism into a fantasy setting when you ha a lot of a lot of vampires that we have in fiction are in settings where there's only humans when you're introducing that into a setting where there's a bunch of different races that's something you have to take into account or explain Absolutely. why it's only humans who get bit imagine a Gigan vampire i mean at night killing off all your cattle that would be terrifying I just came up with an idea for a session. <laughs> You're welcome. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just making a note now. Yeah, but the the other the other um the other the other thing I, f I find kind of interesting with with that is by having it by. By having it as a as a disease, it en it ends up making it that much more threatening for for everybody. Because yeah. again, yeah. when it's human centric, the others could be like, "Oh, we we don't get oh vamp a vampire is rampaging. Well, they they can't bite us, so why should we care?" Whereas if it's a disease that affects everyone, then everyone is sort of going, "Right, let me just blast you with light magic before you come into our town because we had lots of vampires around lately." Yeah, cool, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh no, he turned to Ash. He was a vampire, right? Yeah, the whole thing of if well, she, remember she's a witch if she weighs the same as a duck. Indeed. <laughs> now, I'd, ima I'd imagine that you are that you are going to be putting in a bit a bit of a um a bit of a bestiary for. The, for dra for Dragon Song, with just some of the potential threats that people are going to be dealing with, be a bit of a bestiary, to be honest, like not lots. Yeah, I'm not expecting um, full on monster manual or something like that. Yeah, no, um, it's I've I've put in a load of sort of a range of examples, and it, I've only got half a page for it. That's all I could fit in. It's in a table. Um, I've refined my methodology. Once upon mm -hmm. a time, I used a table with every single stat. And this mm -hmm. time what I've done is I've done a table with like the the useful combinations of stats. Like what's their stealth? What's their investigation check gonna look like if you're stealthing? What's their attack dice? That sort of thing, rather than going, okay, here's every single stat. Because mm -hmm. there are quite a lot of stats, and it makes the table very hard to read. Yeah. I can I cer I certainly know how that how that particular thing can go. But what would you be shooting for as far as a total page count? Um, so I'm I'm aiming for about forty four pages in this rulebook primer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Um, I think I think I can easily fit everything you need to play in there. Um, character creation is actually by far the biggest section because of all the types of magic, and each of those gets its own page. I want to be really thorough and very clear about how they use them, what they do. Mm hmm. Um, also each race gets plenty of space. Um, and you know, the, the rules for era D10 really don't take up that much space, especially, you know, there, there are things you can do to condense them because effectively melee and ranged and spells, they all work the same way. 
so you know you you can sort of genericize the 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 terminology and give examples much faster and in much smaller page space than you can by giving each thing separately um so yeah i mean it's overall i'm i'm looking at about 40 44 pages it has to be a multiple of 4 for a um for a perfect bound book yeah i can i can i can certainly get that And what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date, per se, but a ballpark. So, the book's done. It's finished. Um, I'm looking to reimburse myself a little bit, because obviously there was expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, the campaign's going way better than I expected. Um, I, I did a small print run, uh, thinking it would probably be enough, and I'm actually going to have to do another print run of around the same size. Um, so, uh, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I couldn't be more pleased. Um, I reckon I can start sending rewards out early December. My ideal would be to get the vast majority of the rewards to people by the end of the year. Um, I think it's doable. Uh, there are a couple where it's going to be a little tricky, um, but only a couple of tiers where it's going to be a little tricky to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm expecting to be way ahead of the schedule that I've communicated on the Kickstarter, which is uh, May next year. I, 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 oh, well, I'm April for some others. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I expect really to get most of those out the door by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can, I can, I can certainly see that. And yeah. and you know, I, you 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 know very well. I like to, I like to deliver books really ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how, to seeing how it how it how they develop. But with the, with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Uh, I'm I'm always very glad to join you. Thank you so much for having me back, and I hope to be back again soon. I've got another game in the new year, and uh, I'll definitely be in touch and see if you can fit me in. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to talk about it. Um, quick, quick pitch for that game. Um, is uh, gunslingers fighting demons? I am per I am perfectly down for I'm perfectly down for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially especially give especially given some of the some some of the crazy stories you, you can do with this supernatural in in the Wild West. And this is a bad time to mention one of my favorite Marvel characters when I was growing up was Ghost Rider. Uh, it's a great time to mention that one of your uh, favorite characters growing up was Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just that whole supernatural e um, area of Marvel in the '90s was uh, was always my jam. Whether it be Ghost Rider, whether it be um, event eventually bl eventually Blade, whether it be Hannibal King, oh, um, and so and so on. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was I was always more the sciencey side. I was the Iron Man and the and the you know the rest of it. I think it's I think it's because of where I grew up and the fact that I've said that werewolves scared me more than vampires did because you know being being around so much forest and stray stray wolves and, and the like were not an uncommon thing. I understand that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But with yeah. the but at. One and once again, a sincere thanks to you for take for taking the time to come in. And as I said, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!